Thank you very much. Thank you to having me here. Thank you to invite me. I'm very delighted to see these beautiful people in front of me, interested to know a little bit about how I survive. And when I meet people, people ask questions. Where do you come from? How long have you been here? And you tell them why I'm here, and they approach a different question. How you survive this so when they hear the story. So how I survive, and easy. I take the risk and run. I run for my freedom. I know it's difficult, it's dangerous, it's not an easy act to do, but I'm a human as all of you who prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. So, I came here. I don't come here to make the choice. I already made it. But I want you to understand why I have made this choice. So, I've been in a prison for 21 times. It's not normal a prison, like you have space to sleep and time to eat and just now, not free to move. It's different prisons. It's security jails. And no one can understand or know what security jail is unless you have been into it. And when they take me to the security jails, 21 times, there's a sentence on the gate of the prison said, whoever enters is lost. Whoever leaves is reborn. And as soon you read it, so you get in and you believe you lost. So I get lost 21 times. But the positive side of it, the second half, I have been reborn 21 times. When you get in, you start to search, to find a way to survive, to, su to survive physically and psychologically. It's a, hor a horrific torture. Is torture has nice names in security jails, like magic rug, grilled chicken, or the golden tail, but it's very, very painful. So I am going to tell you this story a little bit to just make feel what it's like for me. When I was young, I used to play a silly game. Might most of you play it. Is lie down on the ground and pretend that I am dead. And I do that to, I did that to grab people's attention, my parents' attention. And it worked perfectly. Today, I am here in front of you still playing this silly game, standing on the ground, pretending that I am alive. And to avoid your attention, to avoid people's attention. And I hope it would work, it will work. So, it, there's a painful mechanism to survive, for me was, when they take you to solitary cell, you have a question, I have a question in my mind. And to understand or to get, or to get your strength, you need an answer. So 
there's nobody to answer me around me in my cell, so I ask myself. I ask the insect in my cell. I ask my wants. I ask the darkness, the dumbness, the silent walls. What the most important thing the jailer can take from me? And everything around me give me an answer. It's my life. Okay. But what the jailer can gain or will gain of taking my life? Everything around me give me an answer is nothing. Because death itself is my wish, my wish to survive, to, uh, to survive in a grave better than surviving in a cell. So that's kind of my physical surviving bits. But to survive psychologically is different. You ha I do believe they have the ability to prison me and torture me or kill me. But I do believe they cannot prison my thought. They cannot prison, take, wiping out the ugly image of them in my head. They cannot prison my soul. So I have a nice soul, which is as everyone you have. And my soul always takes me to a wonderful places where I feel strong and I can resist and fight for my survival and win. And we started the bottle on a piece of paper and my weapon is my pen and at the end I mark myself as a victorious. I'm going to tell you a story which has happened to me. And I think at the end of the story, there is a poem. This poem, I sent it to my mother when I was in a prison to help her to understand. And today, I'm going to read it to you to help you understand. One of my prison men, it, the security forces came to my, uh, our house, knocked hard on the door. My dad went out to them and asked them what happened. They said, we need Gazi for one hour. Ask him some question. And as soon they took me, the torture stopped. So, and when I get there, I ask a person, one person, I'm here for one hour. And he say, all right, one hour. I've been here for one hour, same as you, but I've been here three years. And the one hour talks to me, takes me like 23 months. I didn't know what the question was. But in this 23 months, they torture you physically until they believe you cannot handle it anymore. So the, the psychological torture began. They take me, they said, we taking you to your grave. And there's a cell, it's one meter square. The floor is like this. You cannot sit down, you cannot stand up, you cannot sleep. And there's leaking water keep you awake. So, and I say, well, my grave, my grave, it was 211. In prison, they didn't call your name. They give you a number and they call your number. So my grave was 211. I get in and I start, they want to break me, to break my soul. That's the, what they aim in. But I say, no, I'm not giving up. But a few days later, I start to believe, yes, it's my grave. Graves, it looks like this one is dark, small, and you cannot move in it. So I believe it's my grave. I, I start behaving like I'm dead. 
But suddenly I heard voices somewhere. I said, no, it's not a grave. And then I asked, no, these people might visit in the graveyard. And no one visit in my grave. But I to ask again, who knows my number to visit me? Nobody. So one day, the jailer came to my cell and said, 211, you have a visitor. Who's that going to be? Nobody knows my numbers. But I was really happy. And I felt this tiny space is like a heaven. Just very excited to see the person. So when they took me out, it was very painful. It's torture. The light is hurt. I cannot open my eyes. It's like injection my eyes with needles or cleaning my eyes with paper sand. It's very painful. So they take me to the visiting room where the visiting room is you sit in here, there's a glass on the front of you, you cannot see through it, but the visitor can see you. So I don't know who's visiting me. In a prison, you didn't have right, you're not allowed to answer any question about a prison. The visitor have no right to answer, not allowed to ask any question about a prison. So I hear the voice of the person who was visiting me. It was the dearest voice on earth to me. It was my mother voice. And she asked me three questions. How are you, Gatsby? I cannot answer. There is no words to say. Then she asked other question. How do you feel? I said, no. The third question, just I repeat the her question, but I have no answer. Third question make me angry a little bit. What shall I bring you in next visit? Mother, I don't need a next visit. And I asked the jailer to take me back to my cell, to my grave. And there I wrote this poem to my mother to help her. Why I don't answer? It's called Next Visit. Mother, next visit, bring me logic with no lies. Smuggle me freedom in your eyes. Find me a language has been understood because I'm confused in which language I should cry. Mother, next visit, Bring me hope and ask the hidden full moon, how can I cope in this darkness when the tide of oppression runs so high? Mother, I'm surrounded by ghouls standing side by side, sleepless like a coward, am I? Like a fleeting with no food, without wings to fly. Mother, my cell is smaller than my size. My body like a question mark, like a river on a map completely dry. Mother, my, my last breath tries to escape my lips like a hopeless sigh. Mother prison has made me less than myself. And each day, more than once, I die. So that's the poem. I'm sorry, but it's really difficult to go over it again and again and again. But I'm happy to do it for you. Might help you to under, 
understand. So, so I will move swiftly on to other kind of surviving here. So I came here with a good heart, a good will, and I like people. So our media tries to make me feel shame of being a Muslim. I'm very proud of being a Muslim. They label me like the Putin terrorist is my trademark. And they try to make you believe amateurs. Um, if we go back in history, history has introduced to us some dirty names, like the Chinese dictator called Mo Zhang, who killed 78 million people, to Joseph Stalin, the Russian dictator who came after Lenin's death and killed almost 50 million Hitler. And you know and read in your history book about Adolf Hitler, the head of the Nazi party in Germany, and killed between 6 and 60 million, I don't know, but that's the number is being written in books. Uh, Leo Borg, the king of Belgium, who bought a country, 14 sides, of Belgium called Congo and killed 15 million. The Cambodian dictator who killed the 3 million. The Japanese general, uh, Joto, I think, cool, and killed 5 million. None of these names is a Muslim name. And history tries to tell, tell us terrorism is not a religion, is not a race, is an act, an evil act. So I try to make it easy for our media. They want you to believe I am a terrorist. So I will admit to you that I am a terrorist. Where is the poem? Is there. I am a terrorist. I have a Muslim sounding name and beautiful brown skin. <clears throat> so according to them, I am a terrorist fully armed and you and I have to believe their suspicion. So I am a terrorist. I am hiding behind my finger. My bullets are words and the trigger is my pen. I have a grenade full of ink, a sharp rifle pencil to plan and map my mission. I am a terrorist. And my suit is a landmine laid in middles of paper. My heart is a time bomb. I aim to keep it ticking. I am a terrorist and I deliberately came here searching for a thief to steal my bean, a criminal to kill the fear within, a sniper to hunt down all hatred, a gambler to teach me how to play this game to fight for my right and won. That's the other point. So, <laughs> they say, Thank you, thank you very much. They said one eye is enough to see the truth. And I said, to know the truth, you need no eyes. And the truth is, is yes, most of people are not racist, but our system is. Our media, 100% is. So they blame on race. 
to disconnect us. Blame on religion sometimes to separate us and on politics to divide us and on wealth to classify us. So I've been arrested in Edinburgh Airport questioned, <laughs> silly question, from where you get your passport? I find it in the street and it's work, so I travel, I use it. <laughs> Where, from where I get, is it from you, from the home office, find out. So they ask the silly question, yeah, at, um, and I say, well, is, it's feel like, I tell you, like you feel bored, and you say, I must read something. You go to the library, look on the shelves, find, you see an interesting, book with an interesting cover, interesting title. So you open it, fine, fine. Nothing interested in it. So you put it back on the shelf. So I felt it's exactly like this. So I wrote the poem, I am an interesting file. This is not for you, for the, our airport security. I am an interesting file, and my cover is a brown human skin. The choosing color wasn't my fault, but surely is your media historical sin. I am an interesting file, and my cover is a brown human skin. It has a drawing of my thought, a scan of my fingerprints in every airport and tears waiting for my loved one. I am an interesting file, or perhaps I am a suspect project. It seems like I came from nowhere on a horse made out of mist and blamed of carrying invisible weapons. Yes, I admit, all the bullets of your milice are in my heart severely hurts. I am an interesting file, or maybe I am a myth, a story of drunken death, followed by snuffing dogs running down from your elitism, so please lend me the ugliness of your racism to shroud the corpus of my dignity. Thank you very much.